welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> I wanted to try this recipe I saw in here, and it's a bread recipe, and I've never made bread before. But I figured while I do this, I'm gonna talk about a book I recently listened to. So the book I read was called The Stranger Upstairs, and it was about this woman, Sarah Slade, who bought this murder house where basically like the husband killed his wife, tried to kill his daughter, she ran out screaming, he went into the bathroom and killed himself. So she got this house, it's a great deal. And the house has been like empty, it's like 30 years later. And everyone in the neighborhood hates the house because it's bringing down all their um, property values. And it obviously just has such a bad history to it and all this stuff. So like the one, especially one neighbor, really wants the house bulldozed. And so Sarah Slade's big idea is like, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna fix it up, and then I'm gonna resell it for like thousands, millions of dollars. Um, it is all in Australia too. Not that that really matters, but I was listening to it on audiobook, and so I got all the accents, which was fun. But so she buys this house with her husband, and her and her husband are not like good. Like they don't sleep in the same room. They don't really like each other. But so she gets to this house and just like weird things start to happen. Like they hang wallpaper, they walk away, it immediately falls off the walls. A plumber comes in, he gets seriously hurt. Oh, that's a mess. Um, it's all just this crazy stuff. And so basically the house becomes another character in the book and it's like, oh, the house does not want us here. It's very clear uh, that it just doesn't like us. It doesn't want us here. And you know, Everyone was talking about the man who killed his family, like, oh, he was so nice. And then one day he literally just snapped. And she works as a therapist, Sarah Slade works as a therapist. So she goes to work and one of her coworkers spills the beans that actually someone before Sarah owned the house. It was a young woman named Amanda and no one knows what happened to her. Disappeared off the face of the earth. She, Whatever. So now Sarah is like, what is going on? Like stuff is happening in this house. I don't know, but it's not, not looking good for anyone involved. And so she starts going like this crazy good shit. Like her neighbors clearly don't want her. They won't answer any of her questions. And she just starts going like a little crazy. Like she gets sicker because she's in the house and it's just all this crazy stuff is happening that there's just no, like rhyme or reason for. I already messed up. I put water and pineapple juice in this bowl instead of milk and pineapple juice, but it's fine. I have more pineapple juice over here and milk over here. And it's in a like milking, like a breastfeeding bag because the world is not made for single people. And so I buy like a gallon of milk and then I ration it out and I freeze it so that I don't waste it. So this might still be a little frozen, but it's fine. That's a microwave anyway. This is still a little frozen, but it's fine. It's all good. Milk. There we go. And then as the book goes on, you find out that Sarah Slade is just the biggest con woman on the planet. Like she's a lot. Sarah isn't her first name. It's her sister's name. Her sister is dead. Um, and she like took over her identity because she was like, oh, my sister died. So I'll do what she wanted to do. She wanted to be a therapist. She wanted this. She wanted that. Um, which is just bizarre. And then she like really loves like taking over people's identities. Like she did it to a girl at school and the girl called her out she got mad. So she started taking over her sister's identity, slept with her sister's boyfriend who she then married and now owns this house with. And her sister killed herself. And so she was like, oh. You wanted this career, you wanted to marry this boy? I'll do it because you can't. It's all. That doesn't look great, but let's just roll with it. Oh no, that is not right. I think that milk curdled. Ah, can that happen? <laughs> I have no idea. To Google, hold on, pause. Okay, the internet said that the pineapple and milk will curdle, but that's not the same as spoiled, and it might be okay. I'm not gonna lie, it doesn't look great, but it says it won't kill me. So, I'm just gonna go with it. So anyway, <laughs> back to our story. So, and no one's talking about Amanda. Sarah Slade is just the biggest liar. And 
then good old Emily, the coworker who told her about Amanda, is like trying to help her. <laughs> Sarah is just, she's fallen apart. Okay, she tells her her real name, I think it's Lizzie, and, or Izzy? No, it's Lizzie, because her nickname was Lizzie then. So, the husband, Sarah, and good old Emily know, the, know her real name. Trust the process, I guess, on that. So then Sarah keeps getting sicker and sicker. Her husband's like never around. She's like, I think he's cheating on me. And he does admit it at some point. He's like, yeah, I have a girlfriend. And she goes, bananas. Because she's like, my husband has a girlfriend. And I remember, I remember just like a far anyway. But she's still very mad about it. And she keeps, she keeps getting sick. And Emily's like, oh, could you be pregnant? She's like, no, my husband and I haven't even slept in the same room in months. And they're like, okay then. I guess that's not it. But she's still getting sicker. She's not showing up to work. She eventually gets fired. Salted butter. Hmm. So I'll just add a little bit more salt. So she's still trying to figure out what's going on with her house. Who's like, she feels like she's being watched. Well, she definitely is. People are leaving notes. Someone's leaving notes. She thinks it's just one neighbor, the one who's trying, he's trying to sell his house and it's not going for a good price because of her house. And so she thinks it's him. He won't talk to her. All oh, that's crazy stuff. So she accuses him. She's drinking all the time. So you're like, oh, I don't even know if we can really trust you. Uh, as our narrator here, which usually isn't my cup of tea. I don't love an unreliable narrator, but I guess in a thriller like this, it's pretty good. Um, but anyway, at the end of it all, you really just figure out that so her husband leaves, she loses her job, her cat gets poisoned, that's like a whole thing. She goes bananas on that too. The cat death is really like her breaking point. And so she's in the house, she's not coming, she knows. So Emily gets worried about her. So Emily goes to the house, she visits her, she's like, Sarah, we gotta like figure life out, all this stuff. And she's like, you have to go into the attic. I always hear noise from the attic. They go up, there's a creepy like cradle up there from the previous owner. I think the original owner is not Amanda, not the missing Amanda. And the other sex you know? Really just living the dream. She's got the, the husband, the dogs, the kids. She's happy. And Sarah starts getting very jealous of that. And she starts being like, oh, I love how Emily's voice sounds and I love Emily's name and all this stuff. And you're like, uh oh, she's trying to take over Emily's life now. You can't take over the life of someone who's still alive. She learned that in school when the girl like confronted her about it. So they go up in the attic. Emily leaves and then she goes, oh my God. When she was up there, she noticed something on the wall and she didn't know what it was. And then her, when she gets home, she realizes what it is and she runs back to the house. It's pitch black and she has to break a window to get in. And Emily's in the and Sarah is in the attic, sorry. Sarah's up in the attic and she sees her sister. So she sees Sarah. And Sarah's like, Lizzie, like, help me, like, blah, blah, blah. She's like, oh my God. And they're like, what? Is this chick not dead? She was found hanging in her garage. Sorry. But maybe she's not, you know, like, no, she's definitely hallucinating. Like, there is no part of the story that says that this girl would be alive. And you're like, okay, but why is she hallucinating? How is she hallucinating? You have to remember, she's hammered. So you're like, that could be why. <laughs> But those when Emily comes back and Sarah has a hammer, which is very significant because that's how the original owner killed his wife. So then it ends with like, oh, I forgot. <laughs> See, I'm distracted. I forgot about it. So at one point she finds Amanda's, I guess, ex-boyfriend. She finds Amanda's boyfriend. So she goes and she talks to him because how Amanda felt that she was being watched. Um, she didn't feel safe in the house. But basically all the stuff that's happening to Sarah. Which to Sarah is just more proof that it's the neighbor who doesn't want her. So now we're back in the attic and they're fighting over the, the hammer. And you don't know, if, like at some point it ends like equally distant from both of them. It ends with both. And then it cuts to the epilogue. And then the epilogue, um, she is 
Sarah's alive. And Emily's body had been found at the house. And Amanda's body had been found. Wait, learn. Emily figures out. She's got carbon monoxide poisoning. And that's the same thing that like everyone from outside, I guess it makes you kind of go crazy. Oh. I hope this works. I'm not very confident. Oh, we'll see what happens. It smells like bread. <laughs> Starting to look like bread. Okay, so that's my long winded summary, which I hope you can hear over this. The book ends. Sarah took over Emily's identity. She ends up in a different part of Australia. She talks to a cute waiter. Um, and basically she's just gonna like do what she did before and like lie and restart her life. Um, and poor Emily's dead. They found Amanda's body like on the roof. She had like crawled up there in her while she was sick from the carbon monoxide poisoning. And she ended up on the roof somehow. Her um, husband, Joe, that's his name, I don't think I said it yet, or if I did, I probably said it wrong again. His name was Joe. Oh, he, they kind of think he killed Sarah, like, because she kind of framed him. She, like, wrote a letter to his friend and, like, told him that he wasn't really Joe. I forget his real name, Leon or something, and that she thinks he killed his sister, her sister. She killed her sister. I'm sorry, this summary is god awful. She killed her sister and made it look like a suicide. What? They were fighting over something. Well, they were fighting over the fact that she slept with her husband. It's a wild ride, this book. And it take it, and it's like written out of order. Like it's a non-linear, like it flashbacks and stuff, and then it's intervened with um newspaper or um, like news articles and stuff like that. So you're like, what's happening? But Here's my thing with this book. Sarah Slade was annoying as all get out. And I think she was supposed to be like, you were like, you were supposed to kind of know she wasn't trustworthy. You didn't have to like her as like the narrator. But like, I didn't even feel sorry for her like at any point in time. And I don't know if you were supposed to or not. I also felt like, like the carbon monoxide twist was definitely a twist. But I just expected a little bit more. Like I really thought like Amanda was still alive or the daughter from the original case would make an appearance. Or just like, I don't know. I was just like, oh, they were just sick and that made them do harmful things to each other. You find out that she was writing the notes herself but not remembering because of the carbon monoxide. Like Emily figures it all out and then poor Emily dies and she was the best character. Um, but so it just, it was an interesting book. I don't know how long I'm supposed to need this for. Oh, that was too deep of a dimple. <laughs> that, was, that was a full penetrating poke. I hate that I just used the word penetrating. <laughs> Reminded me of Harry Potter. Not enough, not a good enough reason to use the word penetrating. Penetrate. I liked that the house was kind of its own character. Like that was interesting. And it kind of gave it like a mythical, magical element to it. But then like you just realize that it's nothing. Like it, it's just a house, which maybe that's the point. Like, cause it is at the end of the day, just a house. Um, oh, actually no, there's another epilogue or there's another part of the epilogue where a new family buys the house and it's like this poor family and he buys the house for his wife and daughter because that's all he can afford. And I think we're good. I think we're cooking with gas, people. Um, he buys it and they're in and they like just have an eerie feeling about the house. And I don't know if they told him about the carbon monoxide or what. I don't know. It was very weird. It was very secretive. Everything was always so secretive. Um, no. I don't know if you have to do this, but, but apparently I am. Bloop. That is to rest for an hour. That's a long time. Huzzah! Okay. You go to bed. Good night, little bird.
due at 4 p.m. Okay, it's been an hour. This is supposed to have risen. Whoa! She definitely did. Look at that. You see that? Okay. I don't remember where I left off on the book story. I know you guys are probably just so upset about that. I have to cut this into eight little dough balls. Um, yeah, I don't remember where I left off on that. Uh, like, I enjoyed it. I did. Stranger Upstairs. Also, the title kind of threw me. So, the whole book, she, like, thinks she hears people upstairs. And there's... You find out there was there was never anyone up there. Only she went up there. Which I guess you could say the stranger is like her almost secondary mental state. Like she's a stranger to herself. But I just like was really expecting something a little bit more. Oh, she's a bit sticky, but I think that's okay. Um, I'm supposed to make eight rolls, so cut her in half. Half and half. By the time you get to eight, a lot of characters are like mentioned, and even some of them are like in it, and then they they did like one thing, and then they're just like not a part of the story at all, which happens, I guess, and that's fine. And I guess some of them were supposed to be like red herring, but it was like everyone was scared, but I felt like they should have it should have been something more to be scared of, if that makes sense. But yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I'm just glad that this dough kind of worked out, I think. It was definitely worth the read. Like, I'm glad I read it or listened to it. The narrator was good, so that's good. Um, that's a huge, huge factor for me. But yeah, I'm gonna finish balling up this dough. It's gonna rise one more time, but like in its little pan. And then you add like a honey butter to the top and then they're done. <gasps> Sorry. It's time for the taste test. They smell so good. Okay, so they came out of the oven. They kind of got smushy. Oh, so I don't know exactly how to get them out. If I put the knife the right way, that could be helpful. Let's hope they're cooked all the way through because your girl does not have to. <gasps> These are gonna be buttery as all heck because I really took the. Oh, I should get a piece of the top that's right there. Okay, here we go. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. Um, is it still a little doughy in the middle? Yeah. Maybe I'll throw them back in the oven for a little bit. I don't know if that's like a good thing. Or whatever. If you eat them, you just have to toast them. Maybe. I don't know. They're delicious. Oh, so, whatever. Risk what you want. Okay, thanks for sticking with me. Um, just trust the process, you know, and read The Stranger Upstairs. <laughs> Until next time, so long from my kitchen. <laughs>